Welcome back to another quick tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about After Effects and the rotoscope tool. Um, so rotoscoping basically means you are trying to, essentially what you would do in Photoshop if you wanted to uh, mask out things would be just to um, select them and use the selection tool. And here we're using a video selection tool to um, add layer and depth to our videos or maybe get rid of and replace items in our video. So let's get started. I've just imported a clip here. Uh, it's just an aerial clip. This is of the city of Denver. And I'm just kind of flying by and I have the city in the background. So what I'm gonna try to do is put some text in the background there. Um, something that just says maybe Denver. But I want it to kind of have a cool effect. I want it to just be kind of poking out from these, uh, uh, from these buildings. So what I need to do is um, in order to use the rotoscope tool, we first have to go into that video layer itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on the video layer. And I'm gonna start back here near the beginning of the clip. And I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna highlight my roto brush tool. Um, and it, it's gonna come up with a little crosshairs and green means it's ready to add. If I wanted to subtract, I would hold down alt. But for right now, we're obviously gonna be adding parts of our roto brush. Um, you can also hold down the uh, Windows or Command key, um, and you can drag this out and, and change the size of your brush. So something like that'll work. So I'm just gonna go in here and start selecting uh, some of the buildings that stick up on the uh, Denver skyline here. So as I click, you can see it's doing a pretty good job of, of knowing the difference between the building and the sky in the background. And I'm gonna get a pretty good chunk of the city selected and now if I go over this is where holding down the alt key comes in handy and then maybe even refining the brush size down to something small so I can get in there and I can refine that and then I'm gonna go back on and it's gonna have do a pretty good job of remembering that you didn't want that as part of your selection um, so let's keep going I'm not gonna worry about this crane right now that might be something that we just get rid of but uh, let's go to about this building right here and Let's see what we've got. Um, so you'll notice down here, I've created, and the, the default here for rotoscope is 20 frames, which will keep your, your uh, scope in view up to 20 frames. And I've got this little green line that's basically rendering where that is. It's doing a pretty good job. Um, if at any point you wanna make an adjustment, just come in here, I noticed this little building part was missed. Um, but for the most part, I like where we're at. Okay, cool. So I've got the basics of what I want. Let's go back into the composition view and it's gonna show me now just the city skyline that I have here. So what I can do is I can put uh, Denver in the background and already I've got a nice interesting layer here. Um, let's go back into this uh, view. What we, I could have done is I could look at the alpha view by clicking on this button down here. I can look at uh, my, my regular boundary and I can also use this kind of red overlay to kind of highlight everything. Now let's say you want to refine certain things. Some of the edges aren't exactly the way that you want. There's also this great refine edge tool um, where you can literally click and draw an edge and it's gonna go ahead and go in there and do a good job of refining that edge and uh, this is something that you want to use with things like hair um, or like if you're just um, green screening somebody it's a great tool for for finding edges in this clip it's not really that important that we use it um, but it's good to know where that is so back in the composition view all i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate my video layer and i'm going to drag it below denver and i'm just going to get rid of the roto brush and let's just end our frame, end our clip at basically where we started it. I'm gonna hit N on my keyboard and then right click and trim comp to work area. And let's take a look at what we got. As I render this, I've got Denver flying by in the background. Now obviously there's a couple of tweaks that need to be made, but there's also a pretty glaring mistake here. And that's just simply that I didn't motion track my footage so that my text sticks. So let's just go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the uh, Mocha Tracker, which does a uh, much better job or tracking Boris Mocha. And I'm gonna launch that. Okay, so this is me inside of the 
Mocha Tracker. Um, I have all these different tools and I have some other tutorials that show you uh, kind of how this works, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to track the uh, this building right here somewhere just to give myself a, a, a point. Okay, and once I've got something I want, I can go up here, I can call it, let's call it the Denver text track. And um, I don't need skew, I don't need to rotate. Um, I just want the, the uh, transform and the scale. So just basically the position and the scale in case I'm flying away slightly. Um, and then all I need to do here is highlight uh, over track and I can just begin tracking forward. And you'll see that um, it's doing a good job here of tracking in my coordinate. And we're just gonna hit save and we're done. Okay, so now that I'm back into After Effects after doing Mocha, let's create our track data. And let's create our null. And make sure that our anchor points in the center here and let's make sure that we are uh, transforming the null and let's apply the export and same thing again let's add Denver with a good anchor point in the corner and let's move it into our position here and the last step is just taking the pick whip and putting it there and making sure that we have the order of our layers right so now if we take a look, yeah, it's doing a pretty good job of tracking behind our text layer with the rotoscope, or behind our video layer with the rotoscope in there. And we can at any point, you'll notice that there's some, some mistakes with um, our rotoscope a little bit. So we can just go back in at any point and make adjustments. Um, we take our brush. Can zoom in a little bit here and we can just look at instances where we might be losing a good track so you can just come in here make all those adjustment layers um, all those adjustments happen using these tools as well um, so I hope that was a helpful tutorial um, I hope you learned something and uh, I certainly have been learning plenty on the uh, rotoscope myself but um, I hope that you learned something and uh, thanks for watching.